Well, good morning, grandkids. Get this mic over here close enough to me. We're here today with another chapter in the kingdom far, far away. Let's see what everybody's doing today. This is chapter 28. The king and Dorkley are still with poor Gorman, discussing this book of blood, which Dorkley had found far up on a top shelf in his secret room under his spire. Gorman said, I came across that book some time back. And nothing, he coughs deeply a few times, then goes on. Nothing ever came of it, so I just, I just stuck it up on top. He sips some more water and goes on, on top of Dorkley's books. I, I figured it might likely be, well, be something for him. He was breathing heavily. I see, said King Conley. Had you seen anything in it other than a ship of blood? Those words, Gorman said, but never with the strength. It was revealed to Dorkley. I saw also a ship of darkness. I saw a skull and, and death. But, but the way it appeared to Dorkley, I feel, I feel the time is near, is upon us. Be on the lookout for trouble from the sea. Gorman's eyes closed and he drifted off. Conley motioned for the physicians and said, stay with him, guard him. He grabbed Dorkley's arm and hurried out. He went to his court and sat on the throne, Dorkley standing by his side. He motioned for the nearest guard and told him to get General Bonester, here immediately. While they waited, he turned to the young wizard and said, Son, your father is not looking or sounding like he can last much longer. This may have taxed him too much. I agree, sire, he said. I've spent much time with him, thanks to you for freeing me, my time, sire. And he only gets worse. The physicians give him potions and cast their spells, but they cannot seem to help him. General, I've got to prop my head up, kids. General Benester walks in then and up to his king, taking a knee before him and rising. What is it, sire, that you have need of me? I want you to muster all military along walls facing the sea. I want you on watch and ready to call out orders. I want all fighting men ready. Here is what we know. And he told him all the wizard Gorman had told him them. <coughs> Excuse me, grandkids. I had a tickling in my nose that I could not avoid. Are you sure Gorman knows what he's saying? Lonester said. Yes, I believe him, because Dorkley first brought it to my attention. Then Gorman confirmed it, but with more which he had learned long past. The problem is going to be facing us now, and we must be prepared to act. No matter how long, forces have to be held in place, waiting. 
but I believe it will be any day. Yes, sire, Balnesta responded. I understand. The men with, will all be equipped and in place within the hour. He dipped his head, then turned and hurried from the court. Balnesta went to his men, running, calling out orders as he went. He soon had men on the outer city walls ready, others behind them ready for when needed. He had the inner wall directly around the palace lined with guards. Many men were at the base of the walls stocking more weapons. I can't even read my own writing. More ballista, more arrows, even spears. He hurried down to the two military ships toward the upper curve of the bay and told the two captains to ready their warriors to fight if needed and to stay on guard. The captain called, Aye, aye, General. Can you say what might be up? Not much, Bonester said. Something coming from the wizards. They've taken it to the king and the king to us. He called up to the two captains. So just get fight ready is all I can say and stay that way until told otherwise. Aye, aye, captain, or general, and Bonester laughed. We got this. Bonester said, when it's all over, meet in the bar on the dock. And I'll buy you all captains one or two or three. Both captains called at the same time. You got it, Bonester said and hurried away. King Conley had sent a guard to fetch Dermis out of jail, another one to go get Dupree. He walked to the side of the court and sat down at the sitting room table. When his sons arrived, he told them to sit down and poured them all some wine. There may be a coming fight involving the ships. I don't know what it is about. I only know their enemies. I don't even know exactly when, any day, any minute. I want you both to make sure that you have every piece of armor that you need and be and be in it. The same with weapons and ammo. Dermis, when this is over, I won't want to see you in court. I'll send for you. He dismissed the two and motioned for a guard in the door. Yes, sire, the guard came hurrying over. What do you wish, sire? I want you to check at my daughter's house. And at Lady Inez, make sure two guards are on watch at each place. Each place, both are in the outer town court. Don't worry about it if they aren't at home. Just make sure two guards are in place, in both places. Yes, sire. Right now, and the guard dipped his head and rushed out. Word, of course, is filtering out to a few citizens, mainly the ones closest to the palace on the docks and on the docks. They finally are getting frightened and start gathering up a few things and getting ready to head around the road to the first town of Corkscrew Mine, some planning to go on past to Benderborn. By now, evening is coming. Twilight is slowly descending. The moon is withholding its light. The captains of the two military ships in the bay have threatened the men to silence, and not, so and not a sound is on board. No little ships are moving out in the bay. The guards on the walls are hiding with no talking or rattling of weapons. If any man has to say anything, it is short 
and whisper. General Vanester raises his spyglass to his eye and scans the horizon. The man next to him whispers, Hey, Bone, what's going on? Shut up, is the whispered answer, as Vanester looks at him dead in the eye. Vanester raises his spyglass once again. A small cluster of three stars pop behind the clouds, and there is a speck of something on the far horizon, only a bit lighter than the darkness around it. A sail, he said softly to himself. He lowered the glass and told his sergeant at his shoulder, then told him to start around the walls, letting them know, and tell them to be quiet. He turned to the man, and he, and he whispered with a scowl on his other side, and told him to go back to the wall around the court and let them know. Tell them to be quiet, he whispered. They have no idea that we know they are coming, he muttered to himself with a slow smile. On the ship, out there on the horizon, there is silence. The captain orders the oarsmen to stillness and silence. He has already ordered the sails and the flag with a skull to be lowered. He raises his spyglass, looking toward the coast. With a smoke, slow smile warming, he whispers to himself, They have no idea that we are coming. So, friends, we shall see next weekend what's going to be happening. Um, is there going to be fighting in the next episode? Will they have reached the coast by then? We shall see. So thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this chapter, and I'll see you next Friday. Bye-bye, grandkids.